Hello. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about Night, the book that we will be reading for your literary analysis essay. And I'm just going to give you a little bit of backstory or history about the author and then, of course, the Holocaust and what is going on in the book so that you have all of that information going into this project. This is obviously not... Um, everything on this. This is only the tip of the iceberg, just um, the bare necessities so that you can understand the historical context. So the author of our book is named um, Elie Wiesel and he was born in 1928 in Siget, Transylvania. Um, he died July 2nd, 2016 in Manhattan, New York. Um, and as a young teen and child, he was very interested in Kabbalah, which is a part of Judaism. Um, and he also extensively studied the Talmud and Hasidism. Um, and you will definitely see that in the book. Religion is very key to who he believes he is and how he sees himself. Um, so in 1944, when Ellie was 15, the Siget Jews were sent to Auschwitz-Birkenau. Um, and he was 16 when the war ended and he was released. Initially, after the war, he refused to speak about his experience. Um, he was obviously very traumatized and didn't want to relive what had happened to him. But he eventually realized that he... Uh, um, or he felt like he had a duty as a survivor to let others know what happened to him. And so the book that we are reading, Night, was published in 1958. So after his experiences in the war, he became a journalist and a writer. In 1969, he married another Holocaust survivor, Marion Rose, and he would later um, become a professor. He was a professor of humanities at Boston University um, and he taught for the rest of his life. He won several awards throughout his life including the Medal of Liberty and the Nobel Peace Prize. Um, so we can see that he was an influential human. He continued to write and speak on behalf of peace and human rights. So the book is mainly about Weasel's um, experiences in the Holocaust, which um, I'm sure you've heard of, um, but I'm just going to give you a little bit of background information so that you can understand the context of the book. So the Holocaust was the systemic annihilation of 6 million Jews and others by the Nazi regime. So by 1945, two out of every three European Jews had been killed. Um, other victims of the Holocaust included gypsies, the handicapped, homosexuals or members of the LGBTQ community, political dissidents, as well as Soviet prisoners of war. So who were the Nazis, the perpetrators of the Holocaust? Um, the Nazi party was known as the Nationalist Socialist Government Workers Party. They were an anti-communist, anti-Semitic, racist, nationalist group. Um, they were led by Adolf Hitler, and um, one of the things that this group did is they restricted basic rights such as freedom of speech, freedom of press, and freedom of assembly, and through these restriction of rights, they were able to establish a dictatorship. So the Nazis believed themselves to be racially superior to other communities that were living in Germany at the time. Um, they believed that Jews, that gypsies, and that handicapped individuals were a threat to the biological purity of the German race. You also had some propaganda movements going on at the time that blamed the Jews for defeat in World War I, as well as the economic problems and the spread of communism. If you know your American history, you know that this was right at... Um, like the peak of the Great Depression in American history where you had a similar depression going on in Germany and the Nazi parties, specifically Adolf Hitler, blamed um, Jewish German citizens for the depression. 
So there were a couple of ways that the Nazis decided to carry out this genocide. Um, initially, they were just um, murdering people in fields. They were rounding up Jewish people and other minorities and shooting them in open fields and burying them in mass graves. But eventually this was found to be um, not efficient. They felt like it took too much time and they wouldn't be able to kill people in the numbers that they wanted to murder people. So they created six extermination centers where people were murdered by gas chamber and then their bodies were cremated. Um, so initially, um, victims were moved from Nazi established ghettos into these um, uh, concentration camps. Many people there who did not um, die in the gas chambers died of starvation, forced labor, and disease. So it's important to note um, how the world responded to what was going on. A lot of times when um, you know, the Allies look back on World War II. It's almost with a hero complex, this idea that nobody really knew what was going on. And as soon as the world found out what was happening to um, the European Jews, they kind of rode in on a white horse to rescue. And that just is a um, rewriting of history. Historically, that is not what happened. Um, so the American government knew um, what was happening. The British government knew what was happening and they might not have known all of the details, but they were very um, aware that Adolf Hitler had planned to kill all of the European Jews and still there were no Western countries that allowed Jews to free, freely migrate into their country to move to escape this sort of thing. Um, it's really interesting if you look at the Evian Conference or the Voyage of the St. Louis, um, this anti-Semitism was not just a German problem. Um, it definitely was a Western problem. So that is the situation in which night takes place. And so there are a lot of important themes in the novel, themes that I want you to be aware of as you are reading. Um, one of the themes of the novels is man's inhumanity to other men. Basically, the question of why are humans capable of such cruelty to each other. Um, then you have questions of like loss of faith or questioning of faith. I want you to pay attention to how Ellie's experiences cause him to question and lose faith in his God. Um, we have themes of survival. How far are humans willing or capable of going in order to survive? Um, questions of silence, like if God is good, why is he silent when horrible things are happening? And of course, all of these are from the perspective of um, a young boy who is very religious at the onset of this. Um, and then you have themes of father and son relationships, um, watching Ellie's relationship with his father and how it changes throughout the book. Um, definitely reveals some themes that are going on. There's some vocabulary from the novel that I just want you to be aware of. Um, the word Holocaust was not ascribed by the Nazis. It was ascribed later, and basically it means complete destruction by fire. And that word, even though it's a term outside of the historical event, is now... Um, basically singularly associated with this particular event, the murder of more than 6 million Jewish people during World War II. Um, genocide is a word that combines um, the Greek word genos, meaning race or people or nation, and the word sa, or the ending side, meaning um, to kill. So genocide refers to the deliberate and systemic extermination of a national, racial, polit uh, political, or cultural group. The Holocaust um, was not the first genocide. It was not the last genocide. It's um, one genocide in a long history of human violence. 
Um, ghetto is um, a word that describes the confinements of Jews in a set-apart area of the city. Anti-Semitism is hostility or hate or discrimination towards Jewish people for no other reason than the fact that they're Jewish. And euphemism is a mild or vague term that's substituted for one that is more harsh or offensive. So for example, when you say that somebody has passed away, that is a euphemism, meaning that that person has died. I also want you to be aware of what fascism is. Um, even though um, the Nazis had the word socialist in their t um, title or in their abbreviation, um, they were not a socialist government. They were a fascist government, um, which is a system of government with centralized authority under a dictator. A fascist government implements very strong socioeconomic controls. They control who has access to wealth and who doesn't. There is suppression of the opposition or opposing political parties through terror, through um, censorship, and usually through a policy of belligerent nationalism and racism. So for example, insinuating that anybody who is not a member of their group would be anti-government or anti-Germany rather than just somebody who holds an opposing viewpoint. I also want you to be aware of the term death camps. Um, so these camps were dedicated essentially to efficient murder, killing as many people as quickly as possible. And some examples of these camps include Auschwitz-Birkenau, Belzig, Kelmo, and even Treblinka. Um, this term was used for concentration camps um, where thousands of people died of starvation and disease and were also systemically executed. So in 1941, the Nazi party came up with what they called the final solution. And essentially, they decided that they weren't um, killing people fast enough and that shooting and burying the dead was costly and inefficient. And this is when the gas chambers and crematoriums um, that were used to kill Jewish people um, were built. And essentially, these camps... Um, murdered and disposed of human bodies round the clock, killing thousands of people per day. Um, another term that you are going to hear in the novel that I just want you to be aware of is the selection. This um, happens several times throughout the book, and it's going to be a significant event in the author's experience. Um, this is essentially when the Nazi soldiers or the SS soldiers forced prisoners to line up for inspection and decided which prisoners would live and which prisoners would be killed. There's also some uh, Jewish terms that I want you to be aware of. So Judaism is the religion that the author subscribed to in the beginning of his life. It's a monotheistic religion, meaning they believe in only one God. And this is uh, their God is the God of the Jews. Um, it has ethical, ceremonial, and legal foundations. Um, these teachings come from what is considered today the Old Testament. Um, as well as commentaries of rabbis um, that are found in their religious book, the Talmud. Um, so this is the, the Talmud is the most significant collection of Jewish oral traditions. So in the Jewish faith, there is not just one um, holy book, but there also have been um, Jewish rabbis throughout the centuries that have um, made commentary on their religious writings, and those are also considered worthy of study and implementation. Then you have the Torah. Um, the Torah is the first five books of the Hebrew scripture, and they are very similar to the first five books of the Christian Bible, though there are some differences in translation. Uh, synagogue is a Jewish place of worship, and then 
I don't know why it's coming in a different order. Uh, Kabbalah um, is a religious mystical system of Judaism, basically claiming an insight to divine nature. And the Kaddish is a prayer recited in the daily synagogue services, as well as by mourners after the death of a close relative. And all of these are words that you're going to see pop up in the book. As you see them, if you want to reference back to this, you absolutely can. Or just a quick Google search will give you their definitions and meanings. So this picture right here is a famous picture from, um, from um, the rescuers or from the Allied forces who went in to free the members of the camp um, near the end of World War II. And um, you can see circled in yellow, and I have it blown up on the side. Um, this is actually a picture of 16-year-old Eli Wiesel um, when he was liberated. Um, and so it's just kind of interesting to see how this, you know, person ended up in these historical photos. So there are some questions that I want you to just think about as you are reading through this book and you may choose to address some of these questions in your literary analysis essay. Um, so the first one is why do writers write about such atrocious things such as the Holocaust? How does it benefit the author as well as how does it benefit the world? And what is the purpose of reading literature about such atrocious things as the Holocaust? How do human beings justify awful things such as genocide? And specifically, how did the Nazis justify this genocide, the Holocaust? So just kind of be considering them as you read. As you go through this book, and we work on it for the next couple of units, if you have questions, please, please, please reach out. You can do this via email, via office hours. You can talk about it with your peers on the discussion board. This is a difficult piece of literature, but it's definitely worthy of study. Um, but don't just sit alone in your questions. Please reach out to me and reach out to your classmates.